think about anything we wish to bring before God today in prayer. To ask for forgiveness. Jesus said to his followers, You are my friends. Please obey my commands. Let us now confess our sins to him, asking for God's forgiveness and renewing our commitment to try again. Lord Jesus, in your love you invite us to be your friends. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your joy you choose us to go out and bear fruit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, in your power you send us to be your faithful witnesses. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you everlasting life. Amen. Um, actually, it's a little bit neat out, but there we are, thank you. It's better than it looks, wasn't it? Um, 
That reading that Lily has just read for us so well talks about living water. Talks about what Jesus can give us, what God can give us. And this living water talks is about what helps us to keep going spiritually. About God helping to keep us going spiritually and mentally and through all the ups and downs of life. But in our life, we need two types of water. We need this spiritual water. We need God to keep us going, keep our spirits going. But actually, we do need physical, real water. We do all need to eat and drink, don't we? We need to, to keep our bodies healthy. So it's important we keep the both going, our bodies and our spirits. And today we're thinking a bit about our bodies, keeping them going, because we're thinking about fair trend. And I'm not going to say too much about that now, because what I thought we'd do is start with a quiz. So, there you go. Some of you seem more pleased than others about that. Don't worry. You don't have to write anything down or go in groups or anything. I've just got three questions. Okay. So, first question of our quiz is, which fruit is seen as the most important in the world? Which fruit is seen as the most important in the world because it offers food and nutrition to millions of people around the whole world. So, anyone got an idea of which fruit is seen as most important? Samantha, what do you think? An apricot. Great answer. We're going to get a few answers and then we'll come back to what it is. Apricot? Oh. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> yeah? Have you got an answer? Come and cheer and got one. Go on then, if you have got an answer. Oh. Any fruit? Do you eat fruit, Jane? <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> well, I'm not impressed by that. <laughs> oh, you've got one now. Grapes? Right. Bananas. Bananas? Any other suggestion? You're saying bananas? Yes. Any other thought? Yes? Orange. On orange? Apple? Apple? Is rice a fruit? Well, do you know, that's a challenge for you to find out tell us next week, cast you. Okay? <laughs> I'll tell you not the answer. But whether it's a fruit, who knows? So, we've had a few answers there. What we'll do is we'll take a vote. Who thinks it might be, what's the first one? Apricot. Who thinks that might be the food that feeds millions of people around the world? Okay, a few people. Who thinks it might be apple? Who thinks it might be, what else did we have? Bananas? Okay, who thinks it might be? What's the last one we had? Great. Okay, that wasn't very popular, sorry, Jeff. It's the only fruit you can think of. <laughs> You'd have to get a lot of grapes, wouldn't you, to um, get a lot. Of wine You're thinking of wine. <laughs> so, I'll give you a clue. It's a tropical crop. So, that means it doesn't really grow in this country. It doesn't mean really grow in England. And a lot of climate change issues, like wildfires, affect how it grows. So hands up again, who thinks it still might be apples? Who thinks it might be bananas? Apricots? I tell you, the answer is actually bananas. There you go, so well done. You should have bought stickers, then you could have had one. So there you go, bananas. Millions of people around the world eat bananas. I know why you didn't say that, because we don't eat them, do we? No, but most people eat bananas. But next question. Which product industry, it's a food thing, which food is worth four billion pounds in the UK? There's some food that is worth four billion pounds in the UK. And I've got any thoughts or do we need some clue? You've got your hands straight up, Lily. What do you think? What food? Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake? Oh, she said that very happy. That's what you mean said fruity, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, you've got an Dairy, excellent, thank you. Any other food? Coffee? Tea. Pasta? Tea? Oh, there's too many here to vote on. So I'm going to give you, oh, I'll give you a clue, let's have a vote. Who thinks it was chocolate cake? <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks it might just be chocolate? Okay. Who thinks coffee? I can't remember what the answers we have. Pasta? No, that wasn't very no. Okay. So, I'll give you my clue is, 60% of this food is grown in a country called West Africa. So, again, it's not grown anywhere near here. And, and this is another fact, that isn't a very good one, in the next 40 years, 
which isn't really as long as some of the young people think. In the next 40 years, 90% of the places it's grown will not be habitable for these trees for it to grow on because there's a lot of flood. So it's somewhere where it grows. Someone said cocoa, that's chocolate, isn't it? Let's have another vote. Who votes chocolate now? Who votes coffee now? Who votes pasta? The answer was... <laughs>
Now I'm really sorry, Jane. No, There's a drown. So you are getting no water whatsoever in yours. Now, again, these people, they planted theirs in a place where there is enough water. There's enough rain. So they're going to take them home later and I say quite confidently and hopefully that they will grow if you do keep watering them from time to time, folks. They should grow. James, I don't think yours was going to grow very much because he didn't put any water in whatsoever. But don't worry, I've got some more water here. So here we go. I don't know if everyone can see this. He's now had a flood. <laughs> <laughs> so now this whole drug's gone in that very little pot. So again, I'm really sorry, but it's not still not going to grow because you've had some water, but he's had far too much. It's just going to flood everywhere. Now, while I keep talking, I think, do you want to write your names and put stickers on these so you know which one you're taking home? Yeah? So if you... You do yours, Lily. You can write your name, can't you? Can you write your name, Yeah, okay. And then we'll do yours now. So while they're writing their names so they know which ones they're taking home, um, we enjoy these foods, don't we? We've been talking about all these different foods that we do enjoy, and I'm sure there's lots of others that we enjoy. So you're going to write your sticker in a minute, because we're doing that in a pen. Okay. And a lot of these foods we enjoy actually do come from different countries. I mean, a lot of foods we enjoy are grown in England, but there's other foods we enjoy, like chocolate and bananas, that just really can't be grown in England because we're not as warm as we could be. And a lot of these other countries are actually affected more by these climate change issues than we are. We've probably seen on telly these floods, the landslides, the droughts, and that means they just can't grow as many foods as they would like. It makes it harder for them to grow the food, and then it means there's less of it for us to have. I mean, we've seen on the shelves recently, haven't we? They're limited in some places how much food you can buy, how many tomatoes and things you can buy. I mean, it's even becoming an issue in our part of the world and in England. But it is also more of an issue in other places. Now, we can think about climate issues, that's great. But today what we're thinking about is fair trade. That is a, um, food. Can you stick it up? Oh, I could see that coming there. Well done. Well done. Do you want to stick the last one on? Can you write it on another one? Have we all done it now? Now what I'm going to say is when you get home, yeah. do water them every day a little bit and we'll leave these here now and at the end of the service you can take them home. Okay? I'll move them off this flood that you've had. <laughs> or would you like to press these to take home, Jen? <laughs> Tomato seeds. Tomato seeds, I've got any of them. That's great. Do you want to stick it on? Can we get one around the floor?
good for all of us, really. And that is the importance of fair trade, that you can take that message away. Amen. I think I need to move that, and then... Then we are going to turn back to our service book, actually. Thanks, Jane, that's great. So if you want to stand up and find a creed in your service book, that would be great while I'm reading that. I'll tell you what, I'll move them off, they're going to be too much for people to take home, won't they? People will not thank me. So if we turn back to our service booklets now, I did say we would need them at some point. We are on page five. We're going to declare our shared faith in God. We say together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we will remain standing to sing. And again, you're going to need this sheet that hopefully you also picked up on the way in, should have been in your hymn books. We're going to sing, this is the day that the Lord has made. So again, you might want to get the instruments out again. This is the day the Lord has made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for all those who are unwell, that they may know comfort and peace. We pray for those who do not have proper health care at the moment, that they may receive support and better health care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. That was the first time Samantha's helped in the service with the speaking. Can we give a round of applause? Well done. You did excellent there. Really, really well done. Let's start now to share the piece. God gives us a peace which goes beyond our understanding and which we reach through trusting in God. So let us share that peace with one another. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share with one another a sign of that peace. to our Redken books for our next hymn of the morning, number 502. Restore, O Lord, the honour of your name. So that's hymn number 502.
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned toward your world. In love you gave us Jesus your Son to rescue earth from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's sun. <laughs>
Be the blessing on the love of God and on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, here from you now and always.
to pray. Lord of all, with joy we have received offered thanksgiving for your love in creation and have shared in the bread and wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you give us and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. before our final hymn and our final prayer blessings. Um, they are all on the sheet, but I have to say all the ones on the sheet, they all kind of respond to things that are coming up within the next week or two. Um, so I, I'm not going to read them all, um, but please do read them at home. And what I would like to raise your attention to is the Lent talks. If you're sitting there thinking, well, I know Lent started and I've not thought of what I'm going to do that's different this Lent, then please consider coming along to our Lent talk. They're every Sunday evening. And um, they kind of vary. They might be a bit of talk, a bit of discussion. Um, some of them, there might be some pictures to look at. And they vary. I'm leading some, Nigel's leading some, Kate leads some. Now, they are all on the theme of Holy Week, of what happened with Jesus as he was getting ready for Easter. So if you can come to all of the sessions, that's great. But they do all work on their own. So if you can only come to one or two or half of them, that's fine. Don't think, well, I'm going to miss two, so I can't come to any. They will work each session on their own. We're looking um, this week at the entry into Jerusalem. So when Jesus triumphantly came into Jerusalem on the donkey, we're going to be looking at that theme. As time goes on, we've got all sorts of themes, including... Jesus falling out with the religious authorities, all the things that happened around Easter time. Um, they are at five o'clock, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a lovely kind of little small area in the baptistry corner over there, that we can just sit in a circle and have a discussion. So the talk with a discussion, okay? And we end it with Compton, which is night prayers that just last five or ten minutes, a nice way to round up. Um, the session together. So please do consider coming along to that if you can. Um, it is, like I said, five o'clock, okay? The last two sessions, they're going to be a bit later because the clock's changed. But these, this session and the next few weeks are all at five o'clock. So, and even if you're not sure, maybe just come along and see if you think it's for you or not. If um, you're really not able to do that, or even if you want something extra to do, we've got some um, leaflets kind of about this size that have been produced of reflections for drawing lead that you could take home to read on your own for your own prayers. Um, like I said, there's lots of other things going on, so please do have a read. We are continuing to collect money for all the people affected by the earthquakes over in Syria and Turkey and sending that money over there. So if you've not donated yet and you're able to, please um, do so. I think, oh, birthdays. I nearly forgot that one, birthdays. Any birthdays this week? No. Okay. If you put your hand up. <laughs> oh, what were you going to tell me? Do I... Oh, yes, Melinda had a birthday, didn't she? Yeah. Oh, and your daddy did. Yes, your daddy did more recently. Melinda was in January, wasn't it? Yeah. So we might not sing today for that one. And I left my hymn book right up there, but it's okay, I'm coming another two. We're going to end with Give Me Joy in My Heart, number 638. This is your last chance for your instruments for another month. So let's try and hear them if we can. We'll start to sing our red hymn books. We look at number 638.
it three weeks away actually. Um, also, please take your press home if you've planted it. And if anyone didn't plant any and really wants to, I have got some extra little pots going. Um, so you can just come and do that yourself at the end if you want to. Um, and a reminder that we do enjoy refreshments together in the green school immediately after the service, so you're all welcome to join us there. We have a prayer for God's blessing. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and stay with you always. Amen. Amen. And may we all go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.